Welcome back to Jersey Matters. University Hospital in Newark is the only public acute care facility in the state, and it has been on life support for some time. The governor did step in with an executive order, but so much more still has to be done. Here to talk about that is Debbie White, president of the Health Professionals and Allied Employees Union, and you have approximately 1,500 people at University Hospital, and I'm sure you're concerned, but there's been some positive movement, right? Yes, there has. We, the governor appointed a monitor who, incidentally, is currently the Commissioner of Health, but she was the monitor at the time. Sharif El Nahal, we've had him on the show several times. He is now the, the CEO of University Hospital, and honestly, we're very pleased about it. But at the time, Judith Persichilli came in, she did a study, she um, developed a strategic plan. She put it in place. She served as the interim CEO for a while. And then she applied for the Commissioner of Health. So we are so happy to have them. The damage that was done, though, is going to take a while to um, be repaired. The, the damage that was done was done by whom or what? Christie. Uh, in the Christie era, he appointed his friends into positions at University Hospital who proceeded to mismanage and neglect the hospital for a, an extended period of time, so much so that we saw the bond rating drop. We saw leapfrog ratings, and by the way, leapfrog is a rating for patient safety. We saw that drop, and eventually we saw the pediatrics unit closed. Um, and that was done without even notification to the state. So we, along with other community groups and other unions, appealed to Governor Murphy when he came into office to intervene, and he did by putting a monitor in to University Hospital. To, to do, do the do, study. Yes. And, and that is now the health commissioner, right? Yes. <laughs> so so you, you have some powerful people working with you. Talk about how important this hospital is to the community. So University Hospital is a level one trauma acute care hospital. It's the only one in North Jersey. It's only one of three in the whole state. It serves a very impoverished community. And it, it, it's a public institution. This is the most important part. And by public hospital, it means that the state has to invest in this hospital. They have a responsibility to invest and to support the hospital. So without those things, this hospital will die a slow death. And we understand that we had to have the state involved. So we have been appealing to the state to give funds to University Hospital, which really is their obligation to do so, and to invest time, resources, and money. In and and you, you talked about the fact that this hospital serves an impoverished population. Many of the people don't have insurance when they come in, but it was put into place exactly for that yes, reason, was. right? Could talk about the history of this. Right. So in the 1967 uprising in the city, um, there was an agreement that was signed in 1968. And in that agreement, the promise was made by the state to put, well, part of the promise really was what is now known as University Hospital. And as a public hospital, it will never seek to bankrupt um, someone who can't pay their bill. So the services, it's a safety net hospital. And by that, I mean its services are available to anyone, regardless of income. As important as it is to save this hospital, it's, it's kind of shocking it's the only one. Yeah, because if someone is in South Jersey and impoverished, and I know you're from South Jersey and Camden, they have to come to Newark? Yeah. Well, is that the way it is? Well, I, if, they, if they want the services Newark offers, I know it, it's the only public hospital in the state of New Jersey. So, I mean, if they're looking for a public hospital, they would have to come to Newark. Uh, you, you talked about the monitor. I understand that's important. And, and, and a strategic plan. Is the university hospital still bad off at this point? I mean, after all the talk and discussion and executive order and strategic plan? still recovering and we have a ways to go, which is why I am still appealing to the legislature to support University Hospital. Again, we're very, 
we're, we're encouraged by the fact that Dr. Sharif Al Nahal is the CEO now. He, I believe, has the vision to continue the strategic plan. He also has a vision for how to raise more money, I believe. How's that? Um, with a in a foundation, in the foundation that um, has been completely inactive. So he's going to look for private money as well as public money? Is that the so. way, has that happened in the past? I think it's been neglected. In fact, it's been underused, if not misused or not used. Your employees there, they're, they're safer right now? Yes, they you're are. You're union, Mark. I shouldn't say he, your employees. Yes. He has assured us that he intends to keep our employees where they are. He wants it to remain public. He has no um, desire to change it from a public to a, a private institution, and that he's looking out for the interests, not only of the patients, because I know he is, but of of the, the employees. We just had a contentious budget yeah. that went through with uh, many opposing forces. Was, did the governor's budget address you? Did, did it give you money, the original budget by the governor? The original budget probably had more in it for University Hospital. One of the recommendations... But that's not what went through? No. And, and so... Where, what was the shortfall between the two? Do you know? Probably about $8 million. Um, so what did you end we up were looking with? at two. You got two. Mm -hmm. In addition to, there's, so one a part of the strategic plan was a, de, uh, a redesigning and redevelopment of the emergency room. The emergency room at University Hospital serves as kind of a doctor's office for the area. So the, the sheer number of patients that come in and out of there is enormous. And one of the things Judith Persichilli identified was the fact that it had to be redone. Um, I don't believe that there's the money in the budget right now as it exists, as it passed to completely redo that emergency room. Because you got slashed so much from the original budget, and I'm gonna get a little bit of the politics now, do you feel like your union, the hospital, and the impoverished population were victims of a political fight between North and South? I can't really speak to that, but I can say this. Um, I do know there's division in the state. I can we see are, that. We, are, I, I, we I, all I kind do. of know that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I want to speak to the division. It doesn't help it, you at all. I understand. No, no. Because no. you, want, you want help from whoever is going to give you help. And I'm thrilled that we got what we got. We got some money in the budget. Was it what we wanted? No. But is it money for the budget? And are we on an uphill climb? Yes. I mean, we are on our way back. And we want to see University Hospital restored to its core mission, and that is to be a premier teaching facility, um, a safety net for the patients in the surrounding area, and um, able to serve the community's needs. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in today. Good luck. Debbie White is the president of the Health Professionals and Allied Employees Union. Jersey Matters continues right after this. When we come back, meet a father in a desperate search for a cure for his son who has a rare form of muscular dystrophy. That's when Jersey Matters comes right back.